what about this? You see, the, the chart, the chart here is not um, visually super um, easy to you know, read at the first glance. You see, this bar is as big, you know, these are the same size uh, bars in the bar chart. But you see, this bar represents 1.3 seconds, and this bar represents 15 seconds, right? So actually, you know, if visually this uh, lower bar would be only this big, right? Something like that, okay? Or, yeah. So, um, so basically, the database time is much smaller than duration. You see, duration is 15 seconds, database time was only 1.3 seconds, right? What's going on here? Well, when you see this, then my eyes always go here, right? So how many fetch calls did you do? So apparently this query has returned 332,000 rows. And in order to return this back to the user, we have done, the application has done 33,000 uh, fetch calls, right? So, and if you divide this, this means that the array size was 10. The application, uh, you know, JDBC drivers or OCI drivers or whatever, they were configured to, or to fetch only 10 rows at a time. So this is not something you can fix in the database. You, you have to get the application person, you know, application developer, either to increase the fetch size, you know, fetch 100 rows at a time, then you would actually do only 3,000 fetches. Or can you maybe, can you change the query? You know, do you, do you actually need to get all, do you need, are you missing a group by perhaps? You know, do you really need to show 300,000 rows on the screen somewhere? You know, and you know, in some cases, some analytic apps want that. They actually want to fetch millions of rows into their memory, right? But maybe, maybe if you added one more group by in here, you only return 30 rows, but you actually want to show on the screen, right? And, and you don't have to send that many rows back at all. But anyway, uh, an effect, you know, this is what the, where the problem comes from. So 33,000 fetches, that means that, you know, there's going to be a lot, uh, there's going to be a lot of idle time. So, so, so this part of the duration, so this part of the duration, you know, on, you know, in aggregate, we were actually not actively doing anything in the database. We were idle. Our session was idle, waiting for the next fetch to come in, right? And and when the next fetch did come in, then we you know took a bit of more, a few more rows, ten more rows, and we sent sent them back. You know the database time went up a little. You know every time you fetched. Okay. Uh, there is one a question. What about select star? You know if I select the column. If, if I select a few columns or I do a select star, will this affect anything? Uh, yes, in the sense that it will not affect how many fetches you do. That's an application sort of configuration thing. But if you do a select star, then, then maybe 10 rows sent back will be 10 kilobytes. If you, if you only select a few columns you actually need, maybe every, every fetch will be one kilobyte. So you'll have much less network traffic when you do a select few columns. And when you do a select star, then every fetch, you know, will take a little bit longer because of network overhead, right? And you, you wait longer. Okay. All right. Uh, and let me go back for, you know, one more question. Does this mean that the database was able to fetch and return all these rows in 1.3 seconds? 300,000 rows. Yes. Because, you know, uh, uh, 1.3 seconds is 1300 milliseconds, right? And we have, a, or let's say it's it's 1.3, it's it's 1.3 million microseconds, right? And now we returned 300,000 rows and did all the network processing and everything. So 1.3 million microseconds divided by this is about, on average, it was about four microseconds per row. And again, when you do a select star in, a, in an 800 column table, then the CPU will go up as well because now you have to unpack and send and convert, you know, 800 columns per row. But here I, uh, here I, well, I did a select star. Well, but DBA source is not a very wide, you know, it doesn't have that many columns, you know, it's, it's a fairly wide as, as, as far as bytes go, but it doesn't have that many columns, right? 
So anyway, four microseconds per row, roughly, if I do this this math. So four microseconds of of database time, and you know, CPU is only half of that, so that's about two microseconds per row, right? Okay. So um, next uh, topic or next um, uh, thing is. What about if the DB time is much bigger than duration? So uh, uh, you see the, the human user had to wait nine seconds to get the results. Apparently there's only one fetch. Well, you see it's a count, well, distinct, you know, that, that may return a bunch of rows, but uh, it's, it, whatever it returned, uh, you know, was fit into one fetch only. The human time was nine seconds but the total uh, time spent in the database was four times longer, 36 seconds almost. How, th how can that be? Well, it would be, you know, well, the, the, the most plausible explanation is that your query was executed in parallel, right? Your query was executed in parallel, and you see, indeed, when you click on the parallel tab, we have one, two, three, four parallel slaves in this level, and all of them spend about nine seconds of time, you know, doing thousands of IOs. And then they send the rows to the upper level or layer um, in the parallel ex execution plan, but these upper layers did, you know, used only very little time. And query coordinator itself used a little time as well. So in theory, if you use parallel four, then the maximum amount of time, DB time, this query can use, that is that uh, four, eight, nine times more, oops, nine times more than the actual time. But in practice, you know, the query coordinator is not going to be 100% busy, you know, and some slaves maybe, maybe mostly waiting as the others produce rows for them. Okay. So, um, um, so th this is the parallel query is the most plausible expl explanation because every parallel slave has its own session that can concurrently use CPU and UIOs and, and so on. Okay. All right. So, and this is a time to show, um, this is a time to show a, a little, let's see, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go into this slide. Right, so this is um, um, this is a parallel query. This is now a different anomaly. It is a parallel query, and let me actually open it up. Uh, but you see, um, uh, the duration is two minutes. Um, the database time is five minutes, and that's fine. Database time can be longer because this is a parallel query. But uh, this comes from the V dollar SQL monitor view, but this comes from Ash. Um, I'm trying to, uh, let me see, let me see if there was ways to increase the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom. Okay. I know how, how to make, to make it bigger. Um, no. Okay. So I, I cannot make it, uh, make it bigger. So I'm, I'm not, I'm just gonna, you have to look really closely. You see, uh, if I move my mouse over here, it's, uh, it says five, five minutes, 5.1 minutes of CPU time. But when I move my mouse over here, so this comes from now from Ash, the upper number is, is asked from the OS, how much CPU I actually used, but the lower number, it's supposed to represent the same thing is if everything goes well, uh, the lower number is, um, is, uh, we ask from Ash, like how many samples of this query execution, you know, uh, only, you know, this query execution, how many samples were on CPU? You see 8,000 samples. So Ash seems to think that we spent 8,000 seconds, you know, two and a half hours on the CPU. Okay. So, 
but this is five minutes. So what's what is right or what is wrong? So I would trust the upper number because Ash is not Ash is uh, not asking from the OS what is my actual CPU usage. Ash is just based on weight interface that um, Ash doesn't know that if you're trying to be on CPU, but if the operating system scheduler does not let you run on CPU, Ash doesn't know that difference. The upper section knows because we ask from OS how much time we actually spend on the, on the CPU. The lower number only shows you that shows that the Oracle session wanted to be on the CPU, but whether the OS actually let it be on CPU or not, we don't know that. And as this title says here, um, CPU overload. If you have, uh, let's say, eight CPUs, but you have 200 processes who compete for the CPU, then this shows up. You think you're on CPU, but you actually didn't use it. Um, so that's a common problem. It's not only about C, um, it's not only about SQL monitoring. And when you when you drill down, you see, I mean, if if you have parallel four, so this is four slaves only. If you have four slaves, or you know, it, let's say we have two layers, we have uh, two layers in the query, parallel layers, and four slaves each. So it's eight slaves. In two minutes, we are we shouldn't be able to use. 8,000 seconds, you know, two and a half hours of CPU time. So what's wrong? So if I look into the plan here, or actually let me go to the parallel, not the plan. Look at that. Yes, the parallel degree is four, but if your query has a lot of union alls and there are some other constructs as well, some, you know, some joins and uh, aggregations cause that, cause that. In this Oracle version, it's 12.1, Oracle has chosen to use parallel four. It has chosen to sort of split the query into multiple, um, um, so uh, let me see if I have it here. You see, we have, um, we have like group buys and group by rollups. And we have a bunch of different rollups, you see? It's a group buy, but we have multiple different group buys sort of happening at the same time um, in this query. You know, like, or multiple versions of the same group buy. You know, that's what rollups do. And Oracle has decided saying that, hey, I can run this part as one data flow in the query plan. And I can run this part as a separate data flow and this part as a separate one. And, you know, if I scroll up, there is more stuff like that. Um, and similar thing happens can happen with union alls. If you have like ten union alls, then every union all can be its own data flow, which 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 is almost like its own query. You know, it's called a DFO. It's data flow operator. And you see, even though the parallel degree is four, thanks to the query complexity, we have one group of parallel slaves doing this, another group doing something else, another group doing something else all at the same time. And yes, each, each parallel set has four slaves. You know, that is honored. But, you know, we have so many independent sort of data flows going on parallelized at the same time, right? We have four slaves here, four here, four here, four here, four here, four here. And they all apparently are trying to use CPU at the same time, right? And this is where the activity comes in. That's cool. That, this data comes from Ash now. And you see, I only have 16 CPU cores in this machine, right? Uh, degree of parallelism is four, 16 CPU cores in this machine, but regularly we have like 140 slaves who wanted to be on CPU. And Oracle thinks that they are on CPU because if you are waiting for something, then Oracle knows that, okay, I'm in a wait event, I'm, I'm sleeping. I must not be on CPU, uh, you know, and, and Ash will show you as waiting. But if you're not waiting for an Oracle wait event, then Oracle thinks, Ash thinks that it's on CPU. And that's why Ash thinks that we spent 8,000 seconds on CPU during this two minute period, because we had so many slaves of these different data flows currently, concurrently on trying to compete for the CPU. So Ash is wrong here in the sense that if you think Ash is actual CPU usage, not necessarily. If you don't have a CPU shortage, then yes, it's, it gets close. 
But if you have a CPU shortage, then you have a problem, right? And um, and that's when that's why um, that's why I called it CPU overload overload up here, right? If you have a CPU shortage in the OS level, many more sessions compete for the CPU than you have CPU cores, then the ash CPU estimates are much bigger than the actual CPU numbers you get from the OS asking, you know, how much CPU I spent. Okay. All right. Okay. So yes, Ash does not know uh, how much of this CPU we are wait spent waiting on in the CPU run queue and how much we are actually on CPU. You can only maybe derive it like saying that, hey, we have 16 CPU cores. So therefore some of these guys were on CPU, some of them were waiting. But again, this is only one query. This visualizes not the whole OS. This is just one query execution. Who knows how many other queries are running, how many other databases are, are running, and how many other, other, other OS processes are using CPU. So it's, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's, very, it's not very easy to understand. However, this, this time up here, this time that you get from AWR, you know, the CPU time in AWR also comes from the OS. So only Ash has this problem and anything that's based on Ash like this.